today we are wrapping up our series called Winning. We've taken the first two months of 2022 so that we can learn how to win, to win in every area of our life, win in our, in our thought life, win in our faith, win in our relationships, win in our marriage, win in our singleness, win, win in, uh, uh, at work. And today, I'm going to uh, wrap up here in a moment, but I, I, before I tell you the last thing we're going to talk about, I want to read to you our, our theme scripture, 1 Corinthians 9, 24. I hope this scripture has gotten in your heart. It says, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize, so run to win. I hope it's in your heart that you see God has created you to win and not to lose. Yes, the devil is going to attack, and he's going to try to trip you up, but you got to say, no, no, not today, Satan. I'm running to win. I'm going to win in Jesus' name. God didn't create you to run to lose, to get by, or barely make it. You were created to win. If you missed one of the series or one of the messages, please go to our YouTube page. You can go on YouTube, search People's Church Indianapolis. You can watch any one of those sermons, but we are going to learn. We're learning, and we're going to win in 2022. I, uh, our family, we go on a couple family vacations uh, every year, and uh, one of the places we love to go to is the mountains. We just love the mountains, especially the Smoky Mountains. One, they're close. <laughs> you can get there in about four hours or five or six or seven hours, and we love going to the mountains, and uh, I, my wife doesn't like driving through the mountains, but I, but I don't mind it. I love just looking at God's creation and, and just seeing uh, his beauty and just some breathtaking views. So I love visiting and vacationing in the mountains. What I don't love is driving at night through the mountains because there are no street lights. I mean, it is pitch black. You could be on the edge of driving off a cliff. And so when, I'm going, when we're going on vacation, I am locked in to my GPS. I'm watching it. You can see how the curves are coming. But what I forgot is that some of these mountains are so tall and so high that in some places you don't get reception. And in one of our recent trips, I'm driving and, and you ever, you know, you're trying to follow the map but you ever, has it ever been confusing where it's like, do I turn now or do it? You know, have you ever questioned that? Like, that's happened to me a couple times where I, what I was seeing on the map and what I'm seeing around me wasn't matching up and I wasn't sure. And so this happened to us on our last vacation. And all of a sudden, I get the rerouting, dot, dot, dot. Oh, Lord, I missed the turn. And then, no service. Oh, and there ain't nobody out there. There's no gas station to pull over. Jamie's like, you need to turn around. I'm like, what do you mean? Where am I going to turn around? She's like, baby, you need to turn around right now. We got to get back to service. Y'all, we were lost. You know what I mean? And that man is not fun being lost. Have you ever been lost? And then you try to find somebody to help you. And they're like, yeah, go north here and south there. I don't know north, south, east, or west. No. I need to go to the yellow tree and turn left. I don't, I definitely don't know it at night. They're like, oh, look at the sun. When the sun's out, I don't even know what north. Uh -huh. Y'all can. So y'all, we were lost. And one of the worst, one of the worst areas in our life where we can get lost is in our finances. Today, I want to teach you how to win in your money. Win in your money. How do you know if you are lost financially? Listen, if you spend more than you make a year, you're lost. If you don't know if you spend more than you make a year, you're lost. If you don't care that you might be spending more than you make a year, you're lost. If you owe more on your car than your car is worth, you're lost. If you don't know how much you owe on your car, you're lost. 
If paying the minimum on your credit card is a the minimum on your credit card is a way of life, you're lost. If you think paying the minimum on your credit cards is good financial planning, you're lost. If the only money you're saving is the FICA money that's been taken out of your check, you're probably lost. If you don't know how much debt you owe overall, you're lost. If you make financial decisions that you hope your spouse never finds out about, you're lost. If you're doing something financially that you hope the IRS never discovers, you're lost. You can never win financially if you stay lost financially. See, whenever I'm lost, the first thing I have to do is figure out where I am. I ask Jamie. Typically, she does not know either. I then got to go to the map or I'm looking for a gas station. I got to, if, if I don't know where I am, I can't move to where I want to be. Okay? The opposite of loss, though, is being found when it comes to your money. It's finding out where you are so that you can move where you need to be. And so listen, today I want to help you win financially. Listen, don't don't get uncomfortable. This this message is not about giving. Listen, I want to help you win financially. My my goal today is to help you win in your finances. So many people are losing financially and I want to help you win. So so here here's my first point to help you win with your money. Number 1, you win when you find out where you are financially. The Bible says in Proverbs 27, 23, riches can disappear fast. And the king's crown doesn't stay in his family forever. So watch your business interests closely. And then it says, know the state of your flocks and herds. The first key to winning financially is to discover where you are. Some of you, you don't know where you are. You don't even want to find out where you are. Come on, it can feel better not to know. But if you don't know where you are, you will stay lost. I want to give you three things I want you to do so you can know the state of your flocks. Number one, get on your computer get, get a, or get, get a pen and paper and figure out how much you are bringing in monthly. What is your take-home pay after taxes each month? Secondly, write down what you are spending every month. Jamie and I, we have a document on, on Evernote, and we have everything listed out that we are spending every single month. Some people use Excel sheets. Some use other programs. But you want to write down what you are spending every month and then thirdly, write down how much you owe, all right, on any debt, any debt that you owe, and the interest amounts. Listen, if you're going to win, you have to find out where you are financially. Number two, you win when you live with margin. Proverbs 27, 23, it says, riches can disappear fast. Come on, isn't it true that money can disappear fast. It's so easy every month to spend more money than you're bringing in. Your lifestyle can chase your income and you have nothing left over. See, margin is whatever you earn minus whatever you spend and whatever you have left is your margin. And most Americans don't have any margin. I found some margin money jokes. I thought these were kind of funny. Someone said, money talks, but all mine ever says is goodbye. <laughs> Another one said, I remember being in so much debt that I couldn't afford my electricity bills. It was a dark time. <laughs> this person said, if you think nobody cares whether you're alive, Try missing a couple car payments. <laughs> I like this one. I thought air was free 
until I bought a bag of potato chips. Come on, so you ever opened up one like, this thing is a third full. Here's expensive. <laughs> the last one, I don't want money. It's only the people who pay their bills who want that, and I never pay mine. <laughs> Listen, people who live with no margin, they make two wrong assumptions. First is they assume nothing majorly unexpected will happen. I don't foresee any immediate big problems. And then something happens unexpectedly and people are in trouble. They don't get the raise or bonus they were counting on. The boss says we're downsizing the company and they lose their job. The boss says everybody in the company is taking a 15% pay cut. The car breaks down, and it costs $1,000 to fix it. They bought their first home, and the hot water heater stops working. No margin, it leads to trouble and no peace. The, the second is they, they assume the number one enemy to margin is their income. People think, if I could ever get the job, the education, the promotion, the sale, the huge raise, I would have financial margin. Because all I need is a little bit more money. See, the number one enemy to margin is not income. It's lifestyle. All more money does for most people is raise their lifestyle. They get more and they upgrade the car, the house, the television, new electronics, nicer vacations, buy a boat, more clothes, more going out to eat. And there are people who are making a whole lot of money and still have financial pressure and are even close to filing bankruptcy. The issue for a lot of people isn't making more money, it's spending less money. Many Americans received thousands of dollars of stimulus checks from the government in 2020 and 2021, and many were still working their job. First round was $1,200 per adult and $500 per child. Second round was $600 per adult and $600 per child. Third round was 1,400 per adult and 1,400 per child. A married couple with two kids who maintained their jobs received an additional $11,400 on top of their salaries. And a lot of people didn't pay off debt or create margin by saving this money. They spent it. More money doesn't mean more margin. More money means an upgraded lifestyle. And then Christians, they get into financial trouble and they pray, God, I need you to provide more money. God, this tithing thing doesn't work. You aren't blessing me with money. And God says, yes, I did. But you spent it. You're driving in it. Living in it. You're eating out with it. You're wearing it. When you don't have margin, you rob yourself. You rob yourself of financial freedom. You can't plan for the future. You can't accomplish your financial goals. You can't get out of debt. You can't save for the future. You rob yourself of financial peace because you're always stressed out about money. And when you don't have margin, you rob God. Like God wants to use your life in greater and greater ways. But when God speaks to you to give, you can't respond. God says, I want you to go on a missions trip. I want you to help someone in need. I want you to feed the poor. I want you to give to dream builders. I want you to buy someone's groceries. I want you to support an orphan. But you can't do what God has laid on your heart because you don't have margin. Proverbs 21.20, it says, the wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they get. 
And I want you to live a life of wisdom and to have margin so that you can do all God is calling you to do. One of the best financial decisions Jamie and I made was to live with margin. We're not going to compare. We're not going to compete with people. We want to have margin. We obeyed God, and we've been able to save because we have margin. We've been able to save, and we've been able to give generously and give into the things that God is asking us to give simply because of margin. Let me share with you how Jamie and I got margin in our financial life because we did not always have margin. There were seasons we were spending more than we were making. We were racking up debt. We were living with a lot of financial pressure. And so the first thing we did is, is we saved $1,000 in an emergency fund. If you don't have an emergency fund of $1,000, listen, save for one right now. Emergencies will happen, whether it's your car, health, appliances. Do whatever you have to do to get $1,000 in an emergency fund. Have a garage sale. Downsize your car. Stop eating out. Stop buying coffee. Cut off Netflix, Hulu, cable, your phone data plan. Pastor, are you crazy? Yes, you're right. I'm crazy. I'm a little crazy because normal isn't working. Normal isn't working. And can I tell you, Jamie, we did. We bought a vehicle we should have never bought. And so we sold it. And we got a cheaper vehicle that we didn't like as much. But we needed margin. And so we downsized and we've cut some things. And we've had to make some hard decisions. We had to get uh, so get $1,000 in an emergency fund. And then once we had that $1,000, we didn't touch that $1,000 in that emergency fund. We then, we got rid of all credit card, school, and car debt. It took time. It took years and, and, and right now we are debt free the only debt we have is our house but then when we got that extra money those payments that we were that we were putting towards at times we were able to put 500 plus uh, dollars towards debt we then instead of taking that and being like let's get a new tv no 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 we started to save it we started to save it and save it and kept saving it and giving it all right when we dipped into our emergency fund, because there were emergencies that happened, we always replenished it as soon as possible. And then we worked until we got three to six months of savings into our emergency fund. Worked to get three to six months of savings into an emergency fund. We were prepared, and we are prepared for major emergencies. And then fifth, we got term life, a term life insurance policy just in case the ultimate emergency happens. Want to know how Jamie becomes a millionaire? Better treat my wife right. But we're covered. God forbid it, it to happen. But we're, we're, we're covered. All right? Number three, how do you win in your money? You win when you track your spending. You win when you track your spending. Proverbs 27, 23, it says riches can disappear fast. And the king's crown doesn't stay in the family forever. It says, so watch your business interests closely. You have to have a system to know where your money is going. You can't win if you're wondering where your money went. You have to remove the mystery. And so Jamie and I, we track our spending. We're looking at our debit account and we're tracking it and we make adjustments. One time we tracked it and we got hacked and we're like, oh Lord, we didn't spend no $7,000 in Hawaii. Like, it wasn't seven. Were, we didn't have that much at that time, but you know, 700 maybe. We're like, no, we didn't do that. But, but we, we track our spending and we make adjustments. Number four, you win when you plan your spending. When you plan your spending, Proverbs 23, 27, 23, it says, watch your business interests closely and know the state of your flocks and herds. One of the best ways to watch your business interests closely is to plan your spending. Proverbs 21, 5, it says, the plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. I want to give you some keys to planning your spending. Number one is this. Develop a plan on where you will spend your money. Develop a plan on where you will spend your money. Tell your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. That's all a budget is. A budget is telling your money where to go. Jamie and I, because we had so much debt, 
uh, we, we decided to use one of Dave Ramsey's methods. We do the cash envelopes. And so every uh, two weeks when we get paid, we take cash and we have our budgeted envelopes and we put them all in there so that we are not we were not disciplined with the swipe all right and so we got the cash and the envelopes to 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 steer and guide and and it 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 it, it, it where we got a plan that we know exactly which envelopes our money is going to every month number two develop a plan to get out of debt and let me say this too I'm not saying you need to do the cash envelopes. Find a system that works for you to develop a plan to know, uh, know where you're on where you're spending your money. Okay, number two, develop a plan to get out of debt. Romans 13, 8, it says, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another for whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Work towards having no debt remaining outstanding. And there is some debt it will keep you from having margin in peace. Did you realize that if your credit card balance is $8,000 and the average interest rate is 20% and you make a minimum monthly payment of $134, at 20% interest, it will take you 25 years to pay off that debt. You will pay $32,282 in interest charges, which is almost twice the balance, bringing your total to $40,282.84. To pay off $8,000 in 12 months, you would need to make a $741 monthly payment. And you would pay $892 in interest. To pay it off in 24 months, you would need to make a $407 monthly a payment. And your interest would be $1,771. To pay it off in 36 months, you would need to make $297 monthly payment. Your interest would be $2,703. To pay it off in 60 months, five years, you would need to make a $212 monthly payment, and interest would be $4,717. It is hard to win financially if you're paying a lot of high interest payments every month. you got to attack your debt. Jamie and I, about 10 years ago, we made a decision. we got to attack. We have $18,000 plus thousand dollars worth of credit card debt. So we had to attack it. We used Dave Ramsey's debt snowball method, and it took a number of years. But I'm telling you, the relief we felt when we finally had all the credit card debt paid off, all the car debt paid off. I mean, a weight was lifted. And so if you have debt, develop a plan to get out of that debt. Number three, develop a plan to save for purchases. As you work to get out of debt, you have to also have a plan to stay out of debt or you will rack up a bunch of debt again. And so Jamie and I, we are saving for purchases. We knew we needed to replace some carpet in our home, and so we saved for it. We know in a couple years we're going to need a new vehicle, and so we're saving for it. Jamie's got some remodeling. She has a lot of remodeling that she wants to do in the house we're saving for it. We save for Christmas. We have a Christmas envelope. We put away money for Christmas. We put away money. We save for our vacations. You can't win financially if you don't save for future purchases. So save for that furniture. Save for the repair. Save for the car. Save for the TV. Save for Christmas. Save for vacations. And then number four, develop a plan to save and invest for your future. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 through 8. It says, go to the ant, you sluggard. Considers its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or, overseer or ruler. Yet, it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. The ant is wise because it stores for the future. 
You are wise, and you will win if you store for the future. If you paid off that $8,000 credit card debt, and you took the $212 monthly payment, and you invested it for 25 years at a long-term rate of 12%, you would have $404,373. At a 15% rate for 25 years, if you invested that $212 a month, you would have $700,000. $594. At 17%, you would have $1 million. $1,024,703. And if you study rental property or flipping homes or some other type of investment or business, you could earn even more. Students, at 18 years old, if you were to invest $100 a month for 40 years, at a long-term rate of 12%, you would have $1,200,609 by the age of 58. At a 15% rate, you'd have $3,180,977 by age 58. Listen, I want to help you today. Learn from the ant. Save and invest for your future. And I understand that going over these numbers can be overwhelming. I'll be honest with you, as I was writing this sermon, I'm like, oh Lord, carry the woo. But I don't know if I can do this. Listen, here at People's Church, we want to help you. You may not know this, we have two financial small groups. We have one that's for everyone. Meets every other Thursday, 7 p.m. People that are smarter than me. People that know and can give you tools to get out of debt, help you save, help you invest, help you to win financially. We also have a financial small group just for married couples. It's called Marriage and Money. They're going to be meeting monthly. Listen, Jamie and I have needed help. At times, we've gone through small groups. We've gone through people that are really wise with their money, some family members. Listen, sign up today. If you need help with your finances, sign up for one of these small groups. They're free. They're going to help you. They're, 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 they're going to bless you. And so sign up for a, a small group today. Get with Aaron Lantine. He's, he's leading our uh, Thursday night small group. Get with the Potters. They're leading the, the marriage small group. They're here today after service. They're at our small group table. Get signed up today. And I'll close with this. Three final thoughts on winning with money. Number one, pay God first. Put God first. Put God first, and he will bless your finances. Number two, pay you second. You have to save before you pay your bills, or you will never save. Get it in that savings. Get it out of your hand. And then third, pay them third. Pay God first. Save. And then pay your bills. All right? And so I hope today this blesses you. I want to help you win. A lot of people have a lot of stress, a lot of angst over their finances. Listen, God created you to win in every area of your life. And that includes your finances.